as World War II was kind of closing out, there was this program that was initiated by the United States called Operation Paperclip, where we were basically trying to go in and snatch up as many of Germany's rocket scientists as we could. Probably the, uh, I guess you could say the grand prize of that effort was a man by the name of Werner von Braun, who went on to become very, very instrumental in the US space program and in our rocket program. Well, the place where von Braun and his team of rocket scientists did most of their work was where I am today in Huntsville, Alabama. So today, we're gonna to be going into the US Space and Rocket Center here in Huntsville, Alabama to learn a little bit more about how we got into space. All right, well, getting masked up here, so it is what it is. Well, we just walked in and holy smokes, they waste no time wowing you. Right here is a Saturn V rocket that was built in Huntsville, Alabama. So this is the rocket that was designed to uh, send men to the moon. And my gosh, it's huge. That is unreal. So this is pretty cool. This is a uh, ingress-egress trainer from the Gemini mission. So this was a training capsule that was used to uh, train the Gemini astronauts on how to enter and exit with their bulky spacesuits on. So it was, I think on Gemini 4, where Ed White became the first American to perform a spacewalk. So exited a craft like this and then had to get back in. All right, I just mentioned Ed White being on Gemini 4. Well, this gold-plated umbilical cable uh, is what was used to tether Ed White to the, uh, to the Gemini spacecraft for his EVA, the extra vehicular activity. Interesting. And then this is a handheld maneuvering unit. So what we're looking at here is kind of a recreation of Von Braun's office, including uh, Desky would have used some books from his collection. Here's something that interested me though. This little amber plaque was a gift from some of his colleagues in Germany on the V2 rocket project. He uh, brought that with him whenever he came to America. Huh. And here is the uh, V2 rocket that Von Braun helped to create. It was used in uh, Germany for some pretty nefarious purposes, but the technology ended up being used for good later on. This is kind of interesting, and it's something I've never seen before. This is an A5 timer shell and the electronics that would have gone inside of a V2 rocket. Huh. You can see, if you let me zoom in and focus here, you can see the uh, tag there that's remaining on that shell showing where it was made. This display is showing the evolution of uh, rocket technology. So, of course, you have the V2 rocket, which was uh, von Braun's German design. Whenever it came to America, the V2. Uh, led to the Redstone rocket, which was an army project. Next stage was the Navajo cruise missile. Uh, and then in May of 1957, you had the Jupiter Intermediate Range Ballistic Missile. And it could go about 1,500 miles. So this was another product of Von Braun and the Huntsville team. And then you get to the, the Saturn program. What we're looking at here is an engine to a redstone rocket. 
So it originally had a, about a 200 mile range and this was kind of the precursor to the early space launch vehicles. An old Time magazine from 1958 featuring Von Braun and uh, also Von Braun's uh, briefcase where he would take stuff home to work on it after he was done here uh, in the evenings in Huntsville. This is a display showing the evolution of the Saturn missile projects. So this first one right here, uh, this is a Saturn 1 Block 1. So that's what they used early on, uh, just testing out the different rockets which built upon, um, or kind of evolved from the Jupiter and Redstone missiles. And then this next one right here, this is the Saturn 1B. Uh, so the first crewed mission on the Apollo program used this one. Um, and then the big boy, the Saturn V rocket, that was the one that was designed to send men to the moon. Gosh, just, they, they have all kinds of different engines here on display. And all of them really give you a respect for the engineering and work that these guys put into this. Pretty amazing. And then this right here is a J2 rocket engine. So on the Saturn V, there were you know different stages. It wasn't just one rocket that was blasting them all the way to the moon. Uh, on the second stage, you'd have five of these engines. And then on the third stage, there would be one of these engines that would propel them on to their destination. Pretty fascinating. Okay, now I just mentioned how there were different stages. I'm further along here on the Saturn V rocket. So here's the, the first stage that has those big giant engines that I showed earlier. And then I just mentioned the J2 engines and that there were five of them. Well, here they are on the second stage. So they've done a good job here at uh, separating these out to show kind of the inner workings of these stages. I'm going to go up here and take a look at the last stage now. Okay, so again, here's the second stage that had the five rockets, and then here's the next stage that has the one J2 rocket. This would have been the, uh, the final push to the moon. Wow. Amazing that people did this. Now, of course, whenever you're talking about space travel, going to come with uh, a lot of risks. The Apollo program was not immune to that. In uh, January of 1967, during a routine pre-flight test, uh, there was a fire in the command module that killed uh, Ed White, Roger Chaffee, and Gus Grissom. Matter of fact, we visited their graves, or two of them, at Arlington in a previous video. Well, here, they have the backup training suits for all three of the Apollo 1 astronauts that died in that fire. Pretty amazing. So they have a model here of a Saturn V rocket with a little cutaway showing all of the different stages. And you get up here to the top and you can see this is where the lunar module would have been stored. And then this is the service module uh, which would have had things like oxygen, water, fuel, electrical power, things like that things to get them into a lunar orbit and, and return from the moon. And then here on the very top is the command module, which would have housed the, the three-man Apollo crew uh, to and from the moon. Now something that I never knew that, that I found interesting, if you look right here, you can see on this model four little rockets. Well, that is the launch escape system. And the purpose of that was if there was a problem on the launch pad or during the, uh, the first stage liftoff, well, these rockets could fire 
and pull the command module away to uh, save the astronauts. Huh, never knew that before. This is kind of cool. This is a uh, swing arm that was designed to connect to the Apollo rocket. Interesting. The Apollo missions that seem to get the most attention are Apollo uh, 11, of course, and, and Apollo 13. Uh, one thing that I always found fascinating was this thing right here, the lunar rover vehicle. This was on Apollo missions 15, 16, and 17, which allowed the astronauts to cover a little bit more ground. And then, of course, back here you can see a model of the LEM, L-E-M, which stands for Lunar Excursion Module. And then, like right over here is a ladder that uh, that they would have come down. Pretty cool to see a model of this up close. I've seen a few of these before and have them in other videos, but they always, always fascinate me. Uh, this is the Apollo 16 command module. Uh, and if you've ever seen the movie Apollo 13, uh, Gary Sinise plays a guy by the name of Ken Mattingly, who was grounded because it was suspected that he might have uh, some sort of sickness. Well, he ended up flying on Apollo 16. So this is the command module that Ken Mattingly would have been in. Uh, and ended up bringing back a couple hundred pounds of moon rocks. Gosh, so cool to see this. And right here is what kept those boys from burning up. So Apollo 16, the command module that we just looked at, would have come back into Earth's atmosphere at over 24,000 miles per hour. And uh, if it weren't for this heat shield right here that was on the bottom, it would have completely burned up. So if I go around here, well, there you can see how the, uh, the bottom is, is rather scorched. Here's something that you don't see every day. A chunk of the moon taken from the Apollo 12 space mission. How cool. On this display right here, they're talking about just some of the, the inner workings and specifics of the uh, uh, spacesuits that uh, the NASA astronauts would have used. Something that I found particularly interesting is that they custom made the gloves for each one of the Apollo astronauts and these are the casts that were used for the Apollo 11 astronauts. So Buzz Aldrin, Neil Armstrong, and uh, Michael Collins. This is what they used to uh, custom make their gloves for the Apollo 11 space mission. Interesting. There is not one thing on this display that looks appealing at all such as the bacon bars, the scrambled eggs, the beef with vegetables, uh, or the fecal collection assembly, and uh, the urine transfer system. Yeah, space travel, kind of, a, kind of a nasty ordeal in the 1960s. All right, getting ready to go into the Apollo 12 mobile quarantine facility. And something that is interesting is that uh, you now have to go through just as much of a sanitation process as what the Apollo 12 astronauts did. Okay, getting ready. We're all sanitized up. Getting ready to go into the mobile quarantine facility. Hmm. So it looks like just kind of a living quarters. There they have some bunks little kitchen area. I guess we can't go in there. I thought we could. And then a uh, little dining room area and a place to play some Scrabble. I can get on board with that. I like Scrabble. Yeah, that looks right out of the 60s. Huh. Very interesting. Well, that was the U.S. 
Space and Rocket Center right here in Huntsville, Alabama, where so much work was done by all of these different scientists and great minds on, on the Saturn project. Uh, pretty amazing place, definitely worth coming to if you're ever through Huntsville, Alabama. All right, we're off to the next place. All right, getting ready to go into the mobile quarantine facility for Apollo 12. Just got that dude on camera.